Hello, I'm Estelle Bailey, the Chief Exec of the Barks, Bucks and Oxen Wildlife Trust. Welcome to the annual review of our work for 2016-17. This is the first year of delivering our strategic plan, Be Part of Nature's Recovery. Thanks to the tireless effort of our staff and volunteers, we've exceeded all expectations for the year. We've restored more countryside beyond our nature reserves and critically we've done more in urban areas and really importantly we've done more education work with younger people to develop and inspire their love of nature for years to come. Just being in the natural environment has massive benefits to people's health. We need everybody to understand the value of nature and what it does for them. Working in partnership with other organisations helps us build capacity to do more for wildlife. Although some of the political uncertainties around Brexit are challenging, we're on course to protect more wildlife than ever before and to create living landscapes across our towns and cities and to inspire more people to love wildlife to engage with it. Let's have a look at some of our achievements over the last year. We're all about connecting children, particularly children, to nature, but, um, but we do lots for adults as well. Um, of course, these days, um, Children don't have such a connection to nature that they might have done in the past when there was more access to the outdoors, more time spent playing outdoors. Um, these days children are inside a lot more, computers are such a focus of their lives, so I think the work that we do is getting even more important than it ever has been. We have thousands of children every year, more than 10,000 across our four education centres coming um, to see us and the sessions are very, very hands-on. We're all about the heads, hearts and hands approach, the thinking, feeling and doing. That gives people that real first connection um, which we hope will be the beginning of a lifelong love of nature. It's very important that we get children back to basics, get them really experiencing things close up to give them that initial interest. That one there are so many educational benefits to the sorts of work that we do with children, from engendering that lifelong love of wildlife through to things like confidence, um, ability to work in a team, all those personality things. There is huge amounts of evidence now about those benefits and it is wonderful to be a part of that. What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? A recent one which was um, a lovely experience. It's been one of my, just my own personal highlights of the year is a girl who was really quiet in the classroom and she, um, she said to me, um, she, she touched my arm at the end of the session, she hardly said anything through the whole day and she touched my arm and she said, you've really inspired me. She whispered it to me. It's what I live for really professionally, so I can look at what we've achieved in terms of numbers and people who've come through, but it's those very, very special personal connections that make me feel on a personal level that we're achieving the things we want to achieve. We just want to continue what we think is extremely important work and all of our work is underpinned by the contributions and donations of our members so um, for me it's very important that those people who are so generous in giving us their money to support us understand uh, and see the work that we do with, with children and with families. Willy Furs was set up with a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund. Let's hear from Kate Sheard at College Lake about how another grant has enabled us to go back in time. This is College Lake. It's an amazing place for fossil finds and wetland birds. Lake's really important in Buckinghamshire for all sorts of wildlife, the bird life, uh, the butterflies. What's really good about this site is that it's a mosaic of different habitats. So you can, you've got chalk grassland, meadows, woodland, lots more different habitats all within a small area. So lots of wildlife can thrive here. There's lots of bird life throughout the um, 
throughout the year. We get lots of wintering ducks that we're looking forward to arriving soon. And we get lots of breeding waders uh, and other birds in the, the spring and summer months too. We've had a fantastic opportunity here at College Lake. Uh, we were awarded uh, Heritage Lottery funded grants uh, back in November 2015 and this was to improve the interpretation at College Lake for our visitors. Uh, so the main focus was bringing our geology exhibition into the visitor centre. Part of the money also went to providing uh, materials for our Geology Rocks school programme that we offer to primary age uh, schools, children, uh, to find out about geology and rocks and soils and things like that. Historically, College Lake was a farm. College Lake has a farm heritage and that's what we wanted to showcase with the Farming and Wildlife Museum and how they link together. Having the grant has been fantastic because now um, We've got lots of new interpretation boards um, which are really clear for the visitors to understand the messages that we're trying to get across. We've still kept the, the historic photos um, and we've now got an interactive trail for the children. So we've got Harvey the Harvest Mouse and the children need to find him and his friends throughout the exhibition as well. So it's, it's fun and informative for all ages. <music> We're always looking for new ways to engage people with nature and this year Becky Amelia at the Nature Discovery Centre has led two inspiring projects. So we've had a really great year here at the Nature Discovery Centre in Thatcham. We've trialled two new health and wellbeing projects and they've been really successful. We know that nature and wildlife give us uh, benefits like clean water and pollinators for all of our crops, uh, but there's also quite a lot of research and science coming out now that says that nature can be good for your health uh, and that it might have a positive impact on your mental health and your physical health. So we wanted to try these two pilots to find out whether or not we could measure the tangible benefits and if it was something that we might like to do more of in the future. If we could have imagined the kind of things that would have been said by the participants uh, and the impact that it could have had, the very most perfect thing that could have happened actually did. So people really were coming up to us and saying that on that morning they would be in the car park thinking that their mental well-being was really not good that day should they actually come but making themselves come because they knew themselves that it was going to feel better and actually for two hours everything going on in their world was just completely shut out and they could really just feel calm and relaxed and happier and that that made them then go away and think yes I can get on with my day today I will be okay. And here just outside Oxford people are getting engaged in nature in a different way. Chilsville Valley here looks as if it's uh, remote and far away from any sort of urbanisation but we are actually very very close to Oxford um, and that's a good opportunity for people to get out of Oxford and visit different sites. The reason we're all out here in the pouring rain today um, is to, to get the final uh, cut, summer cut of the uh, fen we've got here. So this is quite unusual habitat. So this is actually calcareous fen. They're not your typical acid fens. Uh, these are actually alkaline fens and they have um, loads of different unusual species associated with them. When we started the project, there was uh, four different species of plants recorded in this particular area, very common species. Uh, we're now starting to get some of the more unusual plants back. Um, most recent survey recorded 25 different species, so this is just proof that this work is worthwhile and it's a good motivator for the volunteers. Wild Oxford is a, a great example of how Beebout works beyond its own nature reserves um, and works with other partners such as Oxford City Council to improve habitat um, and promote conservation uh, on other people's land. Whatever the weather, once you've been out on our nature reserves, it gets you hooked. 
some willow and birch uh, to be cut. I, I moved up to Tring from London and I, I just stumbled across this uh, reserve, a wonderful clearing in the woods with lots of orchids and, and then found out it was a nature reserve. I expressed an interest uh, to the local group and uh, uh, I was immediately drawn in. I was doing a, a very uh, busy, stressful job and the idea of being able to be outdoors at weekends, doing some physical work as well, uh, helping to keep me fit because I was getting very little exercise during the week was just perfect for me. And that was 36 years ago and I'm still involved here. <laughs> I'm really pleased that we've got such a varied group working at the, this reserve. Uh, we've actually got more women than, than men in, in our group. We've got a range of ages, uh, we've got a range of abilities and uh, it's nice to be able to give uh, something to everyone in the group. Today the volunteers are working on uh, a patch of, uh, of uh, chalky ground which is very special for a rare plant in the Chilterns, the Chiltern gentian. Uh, it's, uh, the Chilterns is the only part of uh, the UK where it grows uh, as a, a native. We've got a very special colony here and we need to keep the area open for it. As well as our regular group, we use other organisations to help us with work on the reserve. So we use the Chiltern Society groups and we use the Vale of Aylesbury Conservation Volunteers. The data that we gather has to be entered onto computer systems at, the, at our head office and a lot of volunteers are involved in doing that. I'm always humbled by the amount of work that our 1400 volunteers do every year to help us protect wildlife across the three counties. We can only achieve these projects and the day-to-day -day running of our nature reserves to keep them in such great condition with the support of our members, corporate supporters, trust foundations and grants. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's contributed to helping us restore nature across the three counties over the last year and hopefully for many years to come. Thank you for being part of Nature's Recovery. Thank you.